before we talk about muscle tissue and then skeletal muscle in detail, I wanna give you some background on, background on excitable cells and what that means. We will talk a whole lot more about excitability and action potentials when we get to the nervous system, but it can be really helpful to have a little bit more context um, now so that you can understand muscle firing um, better. So some of this here is going to be review. So if I drew you a cell and ask you about concentration gradients, but I want to introduce a little bit that's going to be repeated then we get to nervous system. This is actually from um, the nervous system chapter as well. So here's a cell. We've got our ECF and our ICF. And if I asked you to draw for me or tell me where sodium and potassium are high and low, you could do that maybe. High sodium outside, relatively low sodium inside, and the opposite for potassium. High potassium inside the cell, low potassium outside the cell. These concentration gradients are established and maintained by the sodium potassium ATP pump, one of the most important pumps you can know about. And you'll see why. So this is going to move two potassium in and three sodium out, both ions against their concentration gradients, which is why this process uses ATP, breaks ATP down into ADP and a phosphate, thus providing the energy to cause this to happen. So this, the levels of sodium and potassium create a concentration gradient, also called a chemical gradient. And you know this, if you were to allow, oh, have a channel to allow either sodium or potassium through the membrane, you could predict which way they would go. They don't go that way without a channel because they're very highly charged and they can't really do simple diffusion that well, even though they're small. So if we opened up um, a, a sodium channel, this is the drive for sodium. And this is based right now on the concentration we're just talking about. If we opened up a potassium channel, it would go this way. This is the direction of the drive for potassium based on concentration. However, we're also going to have to think about electrical gradients. We talked about these week one, remember, a type of gradient. So in addition to concentration gradients, there can be an electrical gradient, which is when one area has a different charge than another area. For example, maybe the outside of the cell is more positive, has more positive ions, and the inside has more negative ions. This is actually the case. So our concentration um, of negative ions inside the cell is greater, more negative, typically about minus 70 millivolts. Does depend on the type of cell. Neurons and muscle cells both are fairly negative. So we'll use this as kind of a reference point. So because of this minus 70, there is a drive for certain ions to move in or out based on, on that as well. Um, so we'll get back to that and that these two sum together to create an electrochemical gradient. Because the two are related, these ions both have a physical presence of their concentration and a charge to them. We'll have to consider both. This negative inside is largely determined by these special channels, not that special, huh? yeah. um, potassium leak channels. You know what a leak channel is. So because there are leak channels, we already know. Look, we, we said this. We said potassium was going to move out, out based on its gradient. This potassium moving out constantly is actually a large contributor to this negative resting membrane potential. So this here is our resting membrane potential. 
we will review it again. Your book covers it um, with the nervous system. But for now, you do need to know that it's, it's, it's negative. Muscle cells, that's true. And then there is a huge drive for sodium. Sodium has a drive into the cell, both based on concentration, but also it's negative in here. So there's also a drive for positive ions, including sodium, based on electrical, electricity differences. Um, so there's a huge drive for sodium to go into the cell. This is going to be important because when something stimulates sodium to channels to open, we have a huge, um, there's a stimulus and we can have a big thing happen. An action potential is one thing and muscle contraction. So the other thing I want to tell you about related to this are gated ion channels. Um, these are the things that are going to, so that, that's how you'd have a sodium channel open. There are not sodium leak channels, like there are potassium leak channels, not nearly as many. So if we wanna have sodium come in, we have to have gated channels. Channels that on, open only for certain contexts. Um, so that's one big use we'll see for gated channels. It's not the, not the only one. So I wanna tell you about the three types of gated ion channels. One is a ligand binding to a channel. Um, so you can have a ligand. Let's actually just draw these here. Here's my cell membrane. That's a ligand. Okay. Then we've got in the membrane a channel. It's closed. But when that ligand binds to it, it's going to open. Let's add the ligand that needs to bind. So this is over time, T1, T2. The ligand binds and opens the channel. What kind of channel is this? Well, it depends. There's all kinds, some ion, right? Because channels exist for ions. Then we can have a voltage gated channel. This is when we'll have T1 and T2 again. Oops, that should be closed. So this channel is closed. This channel is open. What causes it to open? A change in voltage. This is a little bit harder to think about. We'll see it again. So this is, let's say, minus 70 millivolts um, inside versus out. So actually, let me write that inside. We usually talk about the charge of the inside. Let's say the inside of the membrane changes to be minus 30 millivolts. That could cause this thing to open. There's a variety of different um, types that can be open by different changes in voltage, voltage, electricity, right? And um, allow different ions in. Lastly, um, I actually wanna mention it. I'm, I'm not going to even draw it because we'll get back to it with sensory systems. Oh, actually I do have a pop up here, mechanically gated. So that's the last one, one that opens due to a mechanical stimulus. Um, so like pressure. So a touch receptor would be this type that physically opens the channel. This one we'll see when we get back to sensory. Um, we will see both chemically gated and voltage gated a lot. So one last thing to wrap up here is that voltage gated ion channels, the presence of them, ooh, that's an ugly thickness, is what makes cells excitable. and therefore makes tissues excitable. So like skeletal muscle, um, muscle tissue in general, and nervous tissue, um, neurons, is the fact that they have voltage-gated ion channels. So when there's a stimulus, they can rapidly respond and depolarize and have, have an action potential occur. That is that electrical signal is due to voltage-gated ion channels. There may be a different type of ion channel that allowed for initial stimulus, 
but these are the ones that are going to allow for an action potential, which is the definition of excitable cells. Okay, introduction there, you will see this all again in more detail when we get to the nervous system.